Hello, everybody. This is Denny Vegas, and we are live from Las Vegas at World Center of Broadcast Media. And today we have a very special interview. We've brought in Peter Starr, world famous motorcycle movie maker, uh, has been making literally dozens and dozens and dozens of motorcycle movies and if racing movies that uh, if you're into the racing uh, genre you definitely have heard of this name a very famous name and what we brought him in here today because not only do we have someone who's very famous at producing movies but Peter in 2004 something happened that pretty much changed everything yeah it did um, tell us about it I was diagnosed with prostate cancer Okay, now how did that go? I mean, you're fat, dumb, and happy. Life is good. Something must have been different in your body that made you like, okay, something's wrong. No. I need to go see a doctor. Absolutely zero symptoms. Wow. And then how did they find this, out? Well, it's as it turned out, I went for my annual physical. Okay. And my PSA, which people that have looked into, into prostate cancer will right. understand, is the blood test they take. Yes was low as it's been as it had been for many years right and he did a digital rectal exam okay. which is where he puts his middle finger yeah you know, a finger they, wave as they, they used to call they it. call it the finger wave some right. do and he felt what he thought was a nodule on the prostate okay and he says i don't like the feeling of that okay i want you to go to the urologist okay. so i trucked off to the urologist and uh, and i'm still looking at a psa 1.2 so i'm thinking nothing to worry about right right Go to the urologist. He said, um, I don't like the feel of that either. I don't, I'm going to do a biopsy. Right. Now, I had no idea what a biopsy was. Right. It, this was like, um, okay, sure. You know, okay. and um, when he did it, they drew uh, 12 1.5 millimeter cores out of a prostate that normally is about the size of a walnut. Right. Okay. Bleed, you bleed. Okay. It was a miserable experience, but the most miserable experience was... 24 hours later when he called me up and he said in an eight second conversation on the right. phone yep you've got cancer i want you to read this book by patrick walsh and come back and see me click out of that eight seconds yeah. i heard one word cancer that's it and all i knew in 2004 was if you got cancer you're gonna die and you're gonna die soon right and that was the thing that turned me around i i absolutely freaked out for about 48 hours okay i mean uh, literally didn't want to get out of bed, you know, couldn't eat. I mean, it was, it, the, the shock was amazing. Not because I had cancer, but because of the way it was told to me and, right. the, and the no follow-up and the no support system. He expected me to read that book, go back and have my prostate taken out because he's a urologist right. and urologists are surgeons and all surgeons do is cut. Right. That's what they do for a living. That's what they do for a living. Well, I recovered from the panic. Went and shopped for, for books. Didn't find that particular book. Right. But I found a lot of other books. I, and I've since read that book. But right. I've read just about everything uh, that was available at that time. And I found a book by Larry Clapp called Prostate Health in 90 Days. And I read it. And I thought, right. this makes a lot more sense. Okay. So, so, uh, so it makes a lot more sense because basically instead of the standard medical, you know, biopsies, operations radiation you know which is now really starting to get scrutinized by a lot of people you were kind of a trendsetter and like you know what there's got to be a better way here well that was my phrase exactly and I said that to myself I said there's got to be a better way and that's when I started my research not only did I read everything that I could find on the subject but I started to talk to doctors that had a different opinion okay and that took me years to do that and all this time I've never had surgery right. never had drugs no radiation nothing because I looked at the statistics if you had radiation the chances of you get it being impotent mm -hmm. incontinent and that's fecal incontinence as well because right. they do burn right through the prostate right, right into the bowel right and this happens and I, I've got dozens and dozens of examples of this if you have surgery the chances of the cancer coming back right after three to five years is significant. The chances of being impotent, about 70%. The chances of being incontinent, between 50 and 70%. So the question is, Peter, okay, what do you, do? You, you just didn't say, forget it, I ain't going to do anything. I'm just going to keep living. So you had to have a plan. And what is that plan? And how did it develop to where today you are literally a leading advocate in the world 
of a different way of handling prostate cancer. Well, and it's very scientific. I mean, it took a long time to put this together. I mean, it wasn't something that came out of the blue. You know, it's not like, um, you know, I was struck by lightning and all mm -hmm. of a sudden I had, a, had a, an issue. No, I traveled around the world. I literally interviewed 56 doctors in eight countries on three continents and put together a documentary called Surviving Prostate Cancer Without Surgery, Drugs, or Radiation. Right. That is a, is a six and a half hour piece of videotape. It's split into sections, obviously, because you can't sit right, down for six and right. a half hours. And it's an education piece. So you took your skills as a filmmaker. Correct. You took your skills as a filmmaker and say, you know what, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to change some attitudes. I'm going to educate men who are obviously coming behind me that obviously, you know, at this point, their life is great, but they're about ready to get, get the shock of their life. And if they can find my, my, my stuff, uh, I, can, I can help. That's exactly what happened. But it was also, in the beginning, it was done, of course, for my own self-preservation. Right. I didn't want to have cancer, right? I didn't want to be impotent. Right. I didn't want to be incontinent, but I wanted to live. Now it's almost 12 years right. since then, and I'm still here alive and kicking. And in fact, very much kicking, you know. Very much so. And so it's a, but it changed my life, and I had to go through a lifestyle change right. to do it. And and. A lot of men, and I, this is one of the things I lecture about, right. is I say to men, look, you can do this, but you've got to put in the effort. You've got to put in the work. It doesn't come like, there's no pill, there's no silver bullet right. to cure prostate cancer. Okay. You've got to clean up your diet, your lifestyle, the way you think. You've got to change your life. Because what you've done from this point up to the point of getting cancer has given you cancer. Right. So you, what do you do? You have to reverse that. And go to a point where cancer didn't exist. Well, of course, you know, and I haven't looked at any or any of any of this, but obviously, in your mind, and you've proven it, you can literally take someone who has prostate cancer, and with a change of lifestyle, change of diet, change of food, it literally goes away. And I'll tell you one more thing, and you're right. And I'll tell you one more thing: if you've had your prostate removed, the chances of cancer coming back are significant. Right. So what you really need to do is still change your diet and lifestyle, because Again, you've got to stop that cancer coming back. Right. So you don't do the same thing you did the first time and expect not to be cancer-free because it will come back. And even though you don't have a prostate, it'll come back somewhere else. Somewhere else. Ask a woman who's got, had breast cancer. How many women have their breast removed and the cancer comes back? How many women have breast cancer and they have one breast removed and the cancer comes, comes back? back? It's a systemic disease that no matter what kind of treatment, even if it's conventional treatment that you right. have, you need to realize you've got to change the system in which you live. Well, you know, it's amazing. We've only got a few minutes. We can talk about this forever, I know. Because mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm just a simple guy. and in, in my mind, I think, well, cancer is just a living something that wants to live. And you would think that you can, if you can change its, its thinking to where, geez, if I keep growing, I'm going to kill the host and I'm going to die. Well, your, your body, but you've you got to understand something. Your body was designed to cure itself. Right. There's a system in there to do that. It's, it only goes wrong when something with the body goes wrong. Right. Correct what's gone wrong with the body if you have time. Now, some people don't discover you know, like brain tumors and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about prostate cancer, which is very slow growing. Right. And uh, I mean... I'll give you a quick statistic. 50% almost of men between the age 50 and 59 have prostate cancer. But most of them will never know, and it'll never be a bother to them. They'll live with it, and they'll die of something else. That's amazing. That's amazing. But you've got, you know, but you've, uh, when you go to the doctor and they do a biopsy, they'll find that cancer, and then and they want to do significant amounts of treatment for you. Right. Which is, it puts you in the, what I call the sheep dip of treatment. You get in one end, you don't come out the other until you, right. you know. And um, Okay, Peter, this is fascinating. Now, um, and I do go on a, for hours on this. That's, I, I that's fine. <laughs> but here's the important thing. There's a lot of men out there my age, 52, 53, that will liter literally – even if they think something's wrong, they won't do anything about it because they just don't. They just hope it'll go away. It won't go away. Peter, uh, let's. I know you know. Hey, if you want to, you want to talk to him about motorcycle ride, riding. That's one thing. But if you want to talk about something that he is passionate about, that wants to change your life, where do we get a hold of you? I know you okay. do a lot of speaking. You go I to do. a lot of places. I where do, do lot we of speaking. find you? Where I, do we get yeah. this? This. I speak to doctors as well as laymen too. Um, this particular DVD set can be got at survivingprostatecancer.org.
okay. survivingprostatecancer.org. We're a 501c3 charity. We exist by selling this this educational program and through donations. I mean, we do get donations that help us along to do what we do. We also put out, as I've shown right. you here, let's see, let's see that a booklet. Now, the diet is very important, right. but a lot of people will tell you things about you've got to have this prostate supplement. And a lot of these prostate supplements just don't work. And the reason okay. they don't work is they don't have the right amounts of product in them that really make the difference. We put together this booklet called Supplements for a Healthy Prostate. It's got everything you need for a healthy prostate in there. It tells you how much you need to take. And um, we don't have anything to sell. We're not selling uh, uh, capsules right. or, or supplements. We're selling education. It's the education that's important. Okay, so this tape, and the, or this tape. Listen to me. DVDs. <laughs> the, 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 the DVD, but this particular segment... Mm. Will go on forever. We put it on <laughs> websites. We put it on our social media. If you find it on YouTube, uh, I know you're on YouTube and you're and you're searching prostate cancer and you're coming across this video right now. Okay, it may be a year from now, might be two years from now, and you find this video. I want you to basically contact my friend Peter Starr. Let him let you just just time to relax and let this <laughs> gentleman kind of tell you what the real scoop is. And we're really proud that you came in today. You know, a lot of people don't like to talk about this stuff. So thank you very much for checking us out. Check out Peter Starr. Check out this, this because I know at this point you're watching this and you're worried. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Don't be worried. Call Peter. Go to the website. Watch the three-minute trailer. It could well change your life. All right. I'm Danny Vegas, Peter Starr. We'll see you next time.